The Foreseen Arcade. Active. Welcome to a really glorious evening here in England. The stadium is almost full to capacity and they, like you, await tonight's match between England and Scotland. Well, I don't know, there's something special about floodlight matches. Um, you know, you just get that bit more atmosphere. Well, the keeper really did well to hold on to that one. Well, they're really holding up the ball well. Billy McKinley. Paul Lambert. John Cotton. Good save, good positioning was the secret. There's Ferdinand. Billy McKinley. Paul Lambert. McGeist! Good block. I don't know how he got to that. players who can pull that off. Great finish. Well, it's so important to have somebody like that that can go past defenders. I mean, unfortunately, I thought a few years ago they were getting squeezed out of the game, these individuals. Who... And they're off the mark. 1-0. Four skulls. Skulls! Well, I'm guessing here, but I think it may have bubbled a bit. And he's done well. Skulls! And the shot causing the goalkeeper a little trouble. Clever play. Jackson! And the keeper collects it, but with a little difficulty. Tosh McKinley. Oh dear, can do without that. We're just coming up to the 25th minute mark and the away team. Good stop. There's Ferdinand. And that really tested the goalkeeper.
Well played. Skulls! Oh dear, another opportunity goes begging. Neat header. Well, that pass left a bit to be desired. Good ball. Well, you expect passing of this standard from continental players. Certainly, we haven't been disappointed here today. And the keeper collects it, but with a little difficulty. Alan Shearer. There's Ferdinand. Billy McKinley. Jackson! Got his body right behind that. Yikes, I a vaster, mighty o. <laughs> oh, tis a fair sharp of wind as blows past the scud and sails, or else there ain't no evo in the sea biscuit, me blighty o. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that. I thought you were a sailor. All salty sea phrases aside, do you actually sail anywhere interesting? Oh, aye, lad, aye. We go to the sunny continent of 4X. Sun, surf, sand, sun, surf, prawns, sand, sun, um, and more surf, lots more sun, and uh, rather persistent jokes about sheep. 
for some reason. Yeah, well, let's forget about the sheep jokes for now. Oh, oh I wish I could. Oh, believe me. Good grief! Look, can I get passage aboard your ship? Oh, can't be done. My old want to be shipmate. I'm only taking the living dead on this trip. Special civic arrangement. See you later. Discworld 2. Demo. Only the dead escape. Your goal in this demo is to get out of town. Dead or alive, so to speak. Irritabilis. In reality, I'm a full foot taller, bronzed and rippling with muscles, but it's been a hard night for the artist. Honest, you just of a... Oh, you handsome little sea weevil, you. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, that tickles. Hey. Oh. What, shall I get inside it? No way. Nobody's ever interfered with a luggage and lift a telebat. Quiet as a log, and just about as smart. Watch. Don't you find something strangely soothing about an ambulatory box which can consume 50 times its own mass in food, clothing and furniture? You don't. Oh. Don't you find... What? what shall I get it? Watch. No! Hmm. I wonder if it's about time my luggage had a bath. What of a sense of foreboding here? No, I don't think so. I have a nasty feeling that this skull motif will come up a lot later on. One crystal ball, complete with test pattern. Just snow. Guess I don't know how they're working. A closet, just the place for the odd skeleton or two. Closet, just the place for the odd skeleton or two. An ironing board. I never use it myself. I think you might be confusing me with someone who actually wants to exert themselves. I've got a better idea. I'll go out there and play the game, and you come in here and risk life and limb, okay? Fascinating, isn't it? The length of desperate stupidity some people will go to just to solve a game. Ooh. A wooden dummy. Hey, its arms are almost as dainty as mine. Try as hard as I could, I doubt that I could break an arm off. A good assortment of jars containing all manner of the latest accessories for the modern medium. I don't really have any use for these. Hmm. A dressmaker's pair of scissors. Let's just leave. Let's just leave him alone. It'll only melt faster if I touch it now. Hmm. Long and smooth. I've just trimmed my nails, thank you. A pair of scissors. Actually, I'm not usually allowed to use the ones with pointy ends. An ironing board might have a dozen fascinating uses. And as soon as I figure one out, I'll get right back to you. A great big ice block. Yeah, now all I need is a martini the size of a bird bath. I've just... I'm afraid I can't cut that. I'll need an iron if you want me to iron that out. 
That doesn't need to be any colder than it already is. load of corpses. Still, I suppose it's nice to get out for a bit of a ride in the fresh air. So this is the dead collector, huh? When I was a lad, I just used to collect butterflies. I suppose it's just a matter of scaling up. Hey, you, leave them alone. If you want to join them, you need to be dead first. Bring out your dead luxury post-mortem transportation services. Five Star Service, Best Cadaver Relocation Agency in Ankh-Morpork. Highly recommended service. Bring out your dead. Dead, sir? Dead? Of course I'm not dead. Do I look dead? No, oh, hard to tell sometimes these days, sir. It's just that if you're dead, then you're stuck in trade. Our post-mortem travel service offers dozens of very exciting internment locations. Have you considered it at all? All the advantages? Advantages? What advantages could there possibly be? Well, lower clothing bills, no more overheads for food, for winter fuel, lower rent. Lower rent? Well, the dead don't move around much. You might say that they don't need as big a set of digs. <laughs> That's just a little undertaker's joke, sir. I'll keep away from them if I were you. Otherwise you'll end up a stock in trade. So how do you transport your corpses anyway? We have a great big galley for all that. Of course, with the dead so vigorous these days, they're only too keen to work the oars themselves. We just can't stop them. Why's that? Turns out they like sculling. <laughs> sculling with the oars. <laughs> sculling. Oars. Dead. Get it? Just trying to inject a little humour? What'd life be like if you had no sense of humour? You tell me. So, where do you transport your corpses? Oh, well, it used to be all mountains, you know, scenic locations. Very cold, you see, so the customers enjoyed it for longer before all their bits fell off. But you should see the place we've just found now, sir. Beaches, hats with corks, and blondes with these huge, straining, pink, oil-smeared... Yes, 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 but how do I get there? Well, you'd have to be dead, sir. We've got the entire season's passages already booked. Look, are you telling me that I have to be dead in order to qualify for tourist travel? Well, yes, sir. But it's a very reasonable option. We let you take all the luggage you want. Why is that? It's all classed as carrion baggage, sir. <laughs> um, that was just another little undertaker's joke. It's a good thing you have a captive audience. Why not just tell me how to get to this holiday location of yours? Just a death certificate should do it, sir. It's the only way to tell these days. Got one, have you? So, you need a death certificate just to qualify for foreign travel. Hmm. In many ways, death's a small price to pay for getting out of this place and starting new life somewhere else. Excuse me, I, I think it's probably time for me to take my medicine. carrying a troll's head. Well, the one saving grace is that the loss of the poor fellow's cranium probably didn't interfere with his thinking.
Do you suppose any of this stuff is a use, or is it just background colour? Stop trying to play with the background colour! Yeah, bugger him. Bugger him. A vile smell? An ambulatory vile smell? Yes, well, that's brought some life into my day. Even though his odour seems solid enough, I doubt that I could catch it with me hands. So this is the infamous foul old Ron. You know, there are some personalities so stunningly horrid, so utterly breathtakingly awful, that they actually transcend the mere physical frame of their owners and stand out as an icon, a banner of meaning with a life all of their own. Then again, there's also hundreds of grubby old street people like this bloke who just make me want to scratch. Oh, bugger him. Oh, bugger him. Uh, <laughs> Millennium oh. hand and shrimp. The buns, the buns. All over the... Oh. You young spiders. Spiders. Uh, I told them, put that in your trumpet. Millennium hand and shrimp. Blow that for a game of trousers. Was there something you wanted? Look, um... Talking. <laughs> I'm good at that. Most of the time I, t I talk to myself, because it's nice to hear an intelligent person speak. Millennium and and Shrimp. You can blow that out of your teapot, no mistake. I'm as sane as the next man. Listen. I just hope I never meet the next man. But I probably will. Look, um... You're a busy man, I can see that. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, right, I've really got behind on me mumbling and shouting out loud quote of the day. <laughs> I see the local care in the community scheme is hard at work. <laughs> of course, a really caring community would probably have moved him further downwind. What's that cloud hanging over you? Stench. <laughs> That's my special smell, that is. <laughs> it's a first-class smell. It's got a life of its own, you know. <laughs> Quite a little personality. You're saying that your smell is so powerful it actually can be seen? <sighs> yeah, it likes the boots, you know. Nothing it likes better than to settle down with a good old Spare boot. A gold piece, now, Spare a gold piece. if you'll excuse me, I've got to continue with my job as resident crazy man in this marvellous street theatre that is Ank Morpork. Those... those are boots you're cooking, aren't they? Prime boots. With... Uh, with stench attached. They smell like shoes, you know. Gotta have lots of boots to maintain a real fine stink, you know. Get off! There's plenty for everyone. Spiders! Spiders! Mumble, 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 mumble. Sticking like sticky paper and lying. Millennium hand and shrimp. Lying! You know, some might say that this chap lacks a firm grasp upon reality. Yeah, bugger him. Bugger him. <laughs> My personal theory is that he has a very firm grasp upon reality. It's simply not a reality the rest of us have ever met before. Oh, God. See you later. Henry Coffin, famous beggar and the man of a thousand nasty coughs and spits. He can hit a spittoon at 20 paces and I wish he'd try to. <laughs> Spare a gold piece, sir. Spare a gold Spare piece. a grope for a... <laughs> Spare a... Yeah. Dame. Forgotten what I was asking now. Oh, please, just go away. Yeah. Give me some money, mate. Just get... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sir. I oh, I didn't <coughs> I didn't realise you were so close. <coughs> he'll, he'll he'll probably wash off. 
<laughs> now look. <laughs> Oh, God. Never mind. Do you serve any useful purpose at all? <laughs> yes, yes, mate. Spear a gold piece. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a social figure, I am. I, uh, I get non-invited to all the best functions in the city I, I, I do. <laughs> what do you mean, non-invited? <coughs> oh, you know, they, they sends me the address and uh, they pays me money not to turn up. I can't understand why myself. <coughs> oh, well, I'm sorry about that, go. No, oh, no, 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 don't rub it off. It only works it deeper into the cloth. <laughs> I probably have more to say, but I'm afraid I keep being distracted by this bloody dreadful smell. Sorry, can't stay and chat all day. Must be off. A saw! At last, I have seen a saw. I think you might be confusing me with someone who actually wants to exert themselves. Spare a gold piece, sir. Oh Spare no, not that piece. old saw. Ouch, those teeth are sharp. Sawing that in half wouldn't help. Why do I suddenly feel like I'm in a sports sim? Won't help me stay on the board longer. Surf's up. Cowabunga, dudes. I've no idea what that means, but it sounds right. Yo! Feels long and smooth. Just needs water now. The duck man, I presume. I just don't know how anybody can live with a duck on their head and not know it. Spare a gold piece, sir. Spare a gold piece. Spare a gold piece, sir. Spare a gold piece. A whole gold piece? Most people don't earn that in a month. Well, the streets are swarming with beggars, sir. So I just thought I'd establish myself in a different niche market. You know, beggar to the upper gentry. Oh, really? So, as I say, sir, any gold pieces to spare? Perhaps raw bullion? Shares? Futures? That sort of thing? Oh, stop it. And go and do something about that duck. What duck? You wouldn't say there's anything in the slightest bit unusual in your appearance at all? No? Why? Nothing that, say, when viewed in a mirror might give you pause for thought. What's a mirror, sir? Ah, <laughs> we may in fact have reached the root of the problem. However, it's a silly problem and so I'm suddenly going to stop talking to you. Look. About this... this... What, sir? Well, it's just... Do you feel any... um... poultry presence in your life? No. Not that I can say I've noticed. So you wouldn't say, for instance, that you have a... um... an unusual choice in hats? Hats? I, I don't wear a hat. Ah. Or pets, perhaps? No, sir. Never keep any pets. They say an owner always ends up looking like their pet. And who'd want to go around in life looking like something silly? Oh, yes, yes, I see your point. Oh, yes. Nah, don't think I really want to handle this one. Correspondence would be welcomed. Goodbye!
Well, obviously, the transportees themselves won't recommend us. idea, but not just yet. Imagine what horrors that could be kept in here. Fortunately, it's locked. Hmm, jars, eh? I'd say somebody around here has a pickling fetish. I'm already in enough of a pickle. Granny Weatherwax. A tough lady, this one. Best to let her get the beauty sleep she so obviously needs. As she can't answer, there doesn't really seem any point. A poster. Ah, Neophobus post-cubist surrealism, I see. Oh, wait a minute, I think it's upside down. Let's leave the scenery alone. Slops. Uh, I don't think we ought to examine this one too closely. I'm not putting my hands in there. All cold. I wonder what he uses it for. A Bunsen burner. What is a Bunsen anyway? And why would you want to burn one? My hands are already warm enough. A mirror. Oh, shiny. Who is that handsome chap in it? A mirror. Who? Is now it's nice and warm. The city mortician. I wonder if this is what he wanted to be at school. How'd you learn? I mean, you start off small with goldfish and so on. I mean, it's a necessary job, don't get me wrong, but it's a... Oh boy. It doesn't sound like a number one choice, that's all I'm saying. I've forgotten what's starting me off on this now. I think I've been catching too much of that embalming fluid. I wonder if he caters for takeaway. I guess this is the bucket they all kick before they go. Afraid it's welded to the floor. Just the thing, a cold hard slab of stone, and what's more, it's unoccupied. Hello! Dead. Why, oh, come in, sir. Come in and decompose yourself. I'm not dead, I was just being polite. Not even a little bit dead? Not fading away? No nagging little cough or unexplained twinge or tiny touch of fever? Come now, surely you can make the effort? No. No, no. I suppose not. All the fun's going out of this business these days. Can't you see that this woman isn't dead? Oh. You think you are qualified to judge, do you? But she isn't dead! Just look at her! Oh, I see. Look at Mr. Expert. That's your expert opinion, is it? An expert in being alive, then, are we? Well, yes. Ah, I suppose everyone is. 
That's the problem with this job. There's no way of gaining any respect. What is it that you do exactly? Well, I issue all the death certificates, make sure they're really dead, that sort of thing. We can't have people being buried alive, you know. I should certainly say not. Yes, they'd be held to pay at the graveyard. All the undead would be on me like a shot. Live bodies in a dead-only area. Wrongful zoning of designated areas, the lot. Very touchy lot, the undead. What have they got to be snobby about? Been there a long time, you see. They're getting very touchy with this epidemic and everything. When you've got yourself a nice grave, good view, patio and barbecue pit, well, you get a bit iffy when a lot of newcomers suddenly turn up. Only to be expected. How does one get to be declared dead round here? Simple, sir. Just lay down on that slab. When a cold mirror won't cloud with your body's breath and there's no detectable pulse, then we can safely declare the individual to have passed beyond. Even if they're still walking and talking? I've had to relax those criteria, sir. In the current situation, it pays to be flexible in your definitions. Well, at least they're cheap and thorough. Any time I feel myself coming over dead, I think I'll just nip in here for a lie down. See you later. Even I don't look dead. If only I fooled this old guy into believing I was. Poking me only serves to prove that I'm still alive. Even I don't look dead. Feels hard and wooden, I suppose. A wooden arm? Doesn't look very lifelike, does it? This should fool him. It'll only melt... <gasps> if it's low body temperature he wants, then it's low body temperature he'll get. Um, look, I'm feeling a little bit dead, and so I thought I'd better just pop along and see you. Right. A uh, very wise decision, if I may say so, sir. Now, we'll do a few little standard tests. Firstly, I'll check your breath, see if it clouds up this mirror. Okay, now I'll check your arm for a pulse. Hmm, looking good so far, sir. Just one last test. Your body temperature. No, wait! Perhaps we can talk about this! Yow! Wonderful news, sir. Wonderful news. Yes? Am I dead? As a doornail, sir. Finally, a satisfied customer at last. Now then, here's a death certificate, which also entitles you to cut price headstone carving, embalming, and free drinks at the yearly mortician's ball. Mortician's ball? Doesn't sound like much fun to me. Oh, you know, sir, once the old embalming fluid starts flowing, of course it kills you in the end, but what doesn't, eh? Well, have a nice death, and please don't hesitate to call round again if there's anything I can do for you. Oh, a death certificate. Now that I'm decently dead, I can get on with my life. Feels like a piece of stiff paper. Strange smell, though. Right, 
Well, hop on, sir. We'll soon have you off to a post-mortem holiday. Did I tell you the one about the carrion luggage? Afraid so. Ah, well, can't win them all, or any of them, come to think of it. Discworld 2. Missing, presumed. Available soon. On your marks! How many hostages do I have to kill before you satisfy my demands? I want dread! Gear! Dread! If I see any other judges, you won't believe what happens next. We need more time. Come on. 
If I dropped a candy wrapper, he'd be even now. He thinks he's so good. Come on in. Take me down, slime. He's already put 17 judges out of action. He's overrun the place. Great. Say hello to Mr. Mayor. He's next. You got five minutes. Remember, I got enough firepower to take out 50 blocks. <laughs> We're working on his identity, sir. Nothing yet. Dread? Face is familiar. Can't give it a name. Trying to remember. On your way there. Take out anything you can, Dread. You'll have to rearm as you progress. One of the judges reports of possible android activity. Then be careful. A number of justice personnel or citizens could still be in the building. Justice is served.
water. Way to go, Rasco. Zone clear. Way to go, Rasco. Zone clear. Way to go, Rasco. Zone clear. Thank you. Ooh, I detected a hot spot, Rasco. Check the map. Come, Digit. We still have work to do. Way to go, Rasco. Zone clear. Come, Digit. We still have work to do. Hey, 
Don't forget those innocent civilians, Roscoe. McQueen to the rescue!
luggage you want. Why is that? It's all classed as... <laughs> Um, that was just another little undertaker's joke. It's a good thing you have a captive audience.